pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock. When he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our father David that is to come. according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, thirsty, and you gave me drink, a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, 
Whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers or sisters, you did for me. Then he will say those to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food, thirsty and you gave me no drink, a stranger and you gave me no welcome, naked and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them and say, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for the one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. These will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today we hear from our blessed Lord, reminding us that our final judgment is one that is affected by the daily choices we make, by the way we treat one another. St. Francis de Sales wrote, consider that last sentence passed on to the wicked. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his companions. Weigh well these heavy words. Depart, he says. It is a word of eternal abandonment that God utters to those unhappy souls, and by it he banishes them forever from his face. He calls them cursed. Consider the contrary. Come, says the judge, ah, this is the sweetness of salvation offered by God. God who draws us to himself and receives us into the bosom of kindness, a welcome blessing which includes all blessings." End quote. The parable in today's gospel is clear. There will be a final judgment. What is most interesting about our reading today is that both the good and the evil failed to recognize how the seeds of this last judgment were planted in their everyday actions with one another. Reread the text. Both groups ask the same question. When did we visit you? When did we welcome you? When did we see you? When did we give you something? Right up until the last day, both groups failed to recognize the intimate relationship between God's judgment of us and our relationship with one another. In particular, both groups failed to recognize the connection between the love of God and performing simple, ordinary acts of love for one another. According to St. Francis de Sales, this parable challenges us to recognize that the final judgment is not a one-time event in the sight of God. In the eyes of God, who judges justly, this judgment is an ongoing daily event. God is extremely interested in judging how we use each moment of our lives, not simply the last one. But while this parable speaks volume about God's judgment, it also has a lot to say about our own judgment. In the final end, the final judgment is heavily impacted by the kind of judgment we use in relating to one another, day in and day out. In all of life's circumstances, the unique as well as the most ordinary. What do our attitudes, what do our actions toward others every day say about the final disposition of our souls? What does the way we live our lives on earth today say about our lives in the hereafter. And so today, you be the judge. 
because God will judge later. And may you continue to use his abundant graces to love him and serve one another as God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pause now as we place our petitions before the throne of God. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for a just resolution to the wars in Ukraine and Israel, the defeat of Hamas and the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are victims of hatred and racism, for those suffering from addictions, and for those whose lives are at risk, that the love and truth of Christ the King will bring liberation, healing, and renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all traveling this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bono. And for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican sisters in Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially John Greer, the brother of Colleen Greer, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Florian Hofer, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions held in the quiet of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Almighty Father, we come before you this morning with our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear the petitions which we have spoken aloud and all the prayers and petitions each of us holds in our hearts. We place them before you in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 571, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 571. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and of peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom thy kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> our glory, our glory, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have several announcements this morning. Our Poor Box collection this weekend is for Birthright. As you know, it's an organization that helps mothers in need to have their babies. Our new parish gift shop, Borgo Santa Agnese, is now open on Sundays after Mass. And when you go in there, if you look to the left, you'll see the introduction to the devout life by St. Francis de Sales. It makes a wonderful Christmas gift. Also, the Catacombs Cafe will be open on Friday mornings after the 6.30 and 9 o'clock Masses. Coffee, espresso, juices, light snacks are all available on a donation basis. Enjoy time after Mass on Friday with your parish family. Next Friday, there will be the Latin Mass at 7 in the evening. Next weekend, the Arts and Craft Guild is having their Christmas boutique. St. Agnes will be hosting Christ's Life in January, a seven-week course which includes dinner, video presentations, and discussion from 6 o'clock to 8.30 on Thursday evenings. To help parents with young children, we hope to offer babysitting on the premises, but we still need some volunteers to help. We have many opportunities for charitable giving, food donations for Madison County, Boy Scouts, poinsettia sales, the Knights of Columbus, Toys for Tots, Jared House Box Project, and the Giving Tree for Catholic Charities. Please take home a bulletin and you will find all the information of those various charities in which you can engage. Right after Mass, the Legion of Mary is sponsoring the blessing of the Miraculous Medal. The Miraculous Medal devotion is a result of the dedication and devotion of St. Catherine Labore, and it's her memorial tomorrow. So we're celebrating that memorial in anticipation by offering the Miraculous Medal. So anyone who is interested in that, please come forward. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 564, Rejoice, the Lord is King, number 564. Mm -hmm. 